The one piece of information that gives you the most decision-making power when you're watching a squat or when you're coaching a squat is your feet. Okay, it's not your knees. We talk about knees a lot because we want knees to be healthy. We talk about backs a lot because we want backs to be healthy. But I can get the most information by watching what your feet do. Let's say scenarios. Okay, so the most common thing that people mess up is they fall forward. Okay, and they might not do it on every rep, and they might not be there the whole time. They might just be okay and then shift forward like that or they might just stay there the whole time and squat down forward with a lot of pressure on their toes. If I look at my feet while I do this, I know that. I don't need to see the rest of the person to be able to diagnose that. So if you're lifting with yourself, you can film yourself and watch your feet. You can even do a close-up on your feet and see, okay, well, I can, I can tell what point of the lift that I'm in because I'm towards the bottom and I see my ankle is forward, but I also see that it's a little too far forward and my heel starts to rise up off the ground. That's an indication that I'm shifting forward. Or I can just watch, right? I can say, oh, it looks like your heel's getting light. And it looks different in shoes. Shoes kind of disguise everything, but you can still see it very well. You can even see toes rising up, and maybe we'll talk about that. So common uh, errors in squatting, shifting forward, heels come up off the ground. So make sure your heels stay on the ground. Second thing, let's talk about over-biasing inward. So with the forward weight shift that we get commonly, we also tend to have, because the joints adopt this position, we also tend to have a collapse in the feet like this, and the knees come in just like this. So I've got a lot of pressure on the inside of my ankles and on my arch here. My arch is flat against the ground, and I'm not maintaining my posture of my squat with active tissue. I'm relying on ligamentous and joint support to hold my body up, to create this force. And if we think about this, right, ligaments don't recover like muscles recover. Muscles have a really awesome blood supply. Ligaments do not. So if we're lifting with longevity in mind, we want to be squatting down with as much muscular effort as we possibly can, and as little joint and ligamentous and passive tissue tension as possible. So we talked about shifting forward. We talked about the knees coming in. So I can look at the feet and I can say, oh, look at that, his bunion looks worse. Or I can say, oh, look at that, his feet are flat. Sometimes these people actually have flat feet and they need help with their feet, and you should watch some of my other videos about that. But sometimes it's just because they're falling forward and it's just because their knees are falling inward. They need a little bit of glute to support them. They need a little bit of hamstring to bring them back. Okay, so my feet tell me that. My feet tell me I'm shifting forward. My feet tell me I'm collapsing inward. And oftentimes those things go together. So you may have to fix them both at the same time. Now, Let's go outward. So what if I'm holding myself out like this? You see this a lot in people who have read things on the internet, but are probably not my things on the internet. <laughs> um, as they come down, they shift to the outsides of their feet. Their knees go way out because they heard you're supposed to keep your knees out to keep your knees healthy. What I would say is you're probably aligning the knee pretty well. Maybe you're doing it too much and you're not aligning the knee well. This, this is probably pretty good. Let's do this. This is pretty good. This is way too much. Okay, and you can see how the, the forces that go through my ankle now are not stacked on my ankle, they're tilted out. I'm actually promoting an ankle sprain, like an ankle roll. Ooh, it just cracked, ow. The things I do for you. Um, so if the knees are being pushed out too far, you'll notice the feet roll up, the arches come off the ground. That is actually going to shut off your glute. Okay, if I keep this out, it shortens the glute, but it doesn't load it, okay? It's not there to support me. If I keep my arches down as I come down, then I can really feel myself boing out with my glute, out of the bottom of the squat. So we talked about falling forward, 
talked about collapsing inward. We talked about uh, collapsing outward, rolling outward. Now, the last scenario that I think these feet are really good at telling you the story of is a sort of shift. Now, what if we had one set of knees that were going out and one set of knees that were going in? What would happen? What would that look like? So let's say I'm bringing this knee inward and I'm bringing this knee outward, like this. So what that is, is that is an ankle mechanism to shift my body weight to the right. If I just line myself up this way and I turn this way, if I'm trying to maximize how far back I can go, my ankle has to turn too because I can get motion there. If I turn all the way like this, right? And then let me bring my foot flat. You see? I lost like 45 degrees of rotation. So the ankle is important for this. And it tells me a lot about the shifting that is occurring during my squatting. So if I come down and I notice one foot is maybe up like this, that's telling me that it's shifting over to the right side. And if the other foot is down like this, I know both feet are working together to do that. Okay, so I can cue either foot. Maybe I have to cue both feet, but I would cue the one that is the most load-bearing. So if you see the, the supinated foot, right? You see the arch come off the ground like this. You see the inverted ankle. Those are all jargony terms that you might hear that describe this. If I see these things, I know that my weight is over on this right side, and I'm probably gonna get a little bit more out of my cueing if I address the weight-bearing side. So let's say I want you to push through the arch of your foot, just like this, and that shifts me over a little bit. And if I'm still pushing with the other foot, then it's time to cue that, and that'll bring me back over, and that'll unlock some of this extra mobility, extra position sense. Okay, so, Recap, we talked about falling forward. Heels come up off the ground like this. Sometimes they come way up off the ground. Sometimes they just get light, right? A good cue for that, push through your heels the whole time. Sometimes the knees collapse in and you've got a lot of pressure on the inside of the foot. Again, a good cue for that, push through the heels. I want you to sink back into your heels while you go because this forward shift is very much associated with this knee collapse. Sometimes you have the knees outward too much, and you might just need to say, keep your feet flat. Push the insides of your feet down. And then finally, if you have some sort of asymmetry where one foot is coming out, the other foot is rolling inward, you may need to address each independently. And I wouldn't necessarily cue them all right away. You might wanna just stick with one, practice it for a week, and then go from there. One final note, the cue, the overall picture that I'm looking for, if I'm, if I'm sitting here and I'm only looking at your feet and I can't see the rest of your body squatting, what I want is what we might call a tripod foot arrangement where my weight is evenly dispersed between right here under my big toe, right here under my pinky toe, and my heel. Okay? If I do that, that means I'm maintaining my center of balance, right? If my center of balance moves to the outside, then I lose the big toe part of it, vice versa, all of these things. So look out for that tripod foot, look out for those three points of contact, and just think about keeping your feet flat while you're doing your lifts.